In this video I'm going to show you how to install a help desk onto your website. The system I'm going to install is this one, OS Ticket, and it's a free open source help desk system which you can download from this website here, osticket.com. Now you may be able to install it automatically depending on how your web hosting account is set up. If you have Fantastico as part of cPanel you'll be able to install it directly from Fantastico Deluxe. You can see it shows it here as being one of the uh, customer support programs that they install. If you have the Parallels Plesk panel then you can install it from web applications and you'll see it's under front office and you've got here OS ticket and if you have the extend control panel you'll find it down here in the uh, CGI scripts area and I'm going to use this for this demonstration. Okay, first thing to do is to click on the link. And then we need to choose an installation directory. So I'm going to install this under blog and help desk. and then click on install now. As you say this can take a few minutes. And there we go it's now been installed and you can see here they'll give you some details as to how to configure the script so I'll just click here although it is fairly easy to do. You've got the uh, advanced configuration which you can look up on the OS Ticket forums which is on their website. Okay, let's log in and get the whole thing started up. It takes you to this installation page and you can see first of all it's going to give the help desk URL and the help desk title and I'm going to rename this help desk then you want the system email and this generally if I was setting this up for real I would probably have an email address that was at the domain because this is just a demonstration I'm going to put my Gmail address in here and then the admin user now you want to be original here so that it isn't something that people are going to be able to hack into so it's best not to call yourself administrator or uh, webmaster or something like that so I'm going to call this Sam Owen and then I'm going to input a password and then the administrator email, I'm going to make it the same one. All this other stuff you should leave because it will set it up automatically to tie in with your MySQL database. And then simply click here on install and it will install it in. Whoops, errors occurred. Ah, uh, right, okay, it needs to be a different email address. There we go, and click on install. And there we go. There is the basic installation. And it's all installed. So now I can log into the admin panel and finish setting it up. and then log in.
and here is the back end uh, where you can start to get things set up when you first set it up it's going to be in offline mode which means that the client interface is disabled and only admins can access this control panel and you want to go through and set up a few settings so click on the settings tab and you can set the email template and the default department is going to be the support department but you can have the billing department and you can add other departments later on now this is a good one to set staff excessive logins and this is very helpful if you find that people are trying to hack into your help desk you can set it so that after a certain number of attempts then there is going to be a timeout before people can log in again. I'm going to set that to three attempts and make it five minutes before people can log in. Then you have the staff session timeout as to how many minutes the staff person can be idle before the system automatically signs them out. I'm going to keep it to the default 30 minutes and you have bind session staff to IP I'm going to keep that checked and then you have the client excessive logins again you can keep this at the default or can change it and this is just a good way of deterring hackers from trying to get into your site there we go and again the client session timeout 30 minutes and you want to make the URLs clickable you can set the date and time um, date format you can see its month date year I'm in the UK where we write the date the other way around so I'm gonna set that to day stroke month stroke year and then the date and time format again I'm just going to swap around the day and month and the day date and time format we might as well leave that as it is default time zone you can select it from the drop down menu you generally want to set this for where your office is based rather than where your server is based so that people know that when you are and when you're not going to be open and I'm going to check here to observe daylight savings time the ticket IDs is a good idea to keep that set at random and ticket priority default should be kept as either normal or low I'm going to keep it at normal and then the maximum open tickets I'm going to say that people can only have three tickets open at a time and again you've got other things well like ticket grace period I'm going to keep that at the default setting along with all of these same thing comes with the incoming emails I'm going to leave that as it is we're going to use the PHP mail function that's on my hosting account I've got shared hosting so it's best to leave it at that and the default system email I'm going to leave all of this at the uh, default settings and so on and you can see you've got autoresponders and alerts and notices and you can set these all up okay we're going to click on save changes and there we go now I'll show you another couple of things that you'll probably want to set up and the first one is departments now there are two departments automatically set up one is support and the other is billing but you might want to add another department for example you might want to add a department say sales so click here on add a new department and we'll give the department a name we'll call that sales and then department email this is the outgoing email 
and you can select it from the drop down list I'm going to have it as my Gmail address or you can if you wish have it as no reply and the department type whether it's public or private and I'm going to keep it as public and then the department signature this will be basically so you can conform with anti-spam regulations obviously if I was doing this for real I would put the real address and other details in and so on set up the email templates I'm going to keep it the system default and also the autoresponders that go out when there's a new ticket or there's a new message I'm going to keep all this at default and set click on submit and there we go we now have a new department the other thing that you will want to add are staff so you can assign different staff members to different departments so if I want to add a new staff member let's say uh, I'm going to click here and say add a new user I can then give them a username and assign them to a department and I can add them to a group they can either be administrators, managers or staff and different people at different levels get different amounts of access to what goes on here in the back office and you fill out all their information name, email address and so on and they need to set up a password etc. I'm just going to cancel that because I'm just going through it here and then if I click here on emails you've got the different email addresses that you can send out these are the uh, supports you've got different templates that you can add in here so you can add a template when you reply or it automatically has a, a reply to a help ticket that's submitted this automates things considerably let's go back to dashboard because there's one other thing that uh, I'll show you if we click here on staff panel there are a couple of things here this will show you when a ticket is submitted you'll get the ticket number and the date and the subject and the department and the priority and you can click here and this is the back end this is what you will read when people submit a ticket to you and you can either select a pre-made reply from the drop down menu and I'll tell you a bit more about that in a moment you can post an internal note to somebody else within the department you can transfer it to another department or you can assign it to a member of staff we come up here to where it says knowledge base and click on that link and what you can do here is you can put in frequently asked questions you can make a pre-made reply to a questions that you get asked often so you can simply click here on new pre-made reply put in the answer in here assign it to a department if you wish and then let me just go back whenever you get asked the same question over and over again you can just simply send one of these pre-made replies in response to the question so you haven't got to answer the same question over and over again every time let's just go back to tickets because what you can also do once you've answered a ticket you can close the ticket out select that little checkbox here and click on close pops up are you sure you want to close selected tickets click on OK and there you are the tickets closed but it still keeps a record of it
that's a quick rundown on how to install and use OS Ticket. It's a really great help desk and it's very, very easy to use.